So please, let's go over to what China is offering us now yes. and how to take care of ourselves so that we don't become, um, we don't have to speak Mandarin in the next 30 years. Let's just to put it mildly. Okay. Yeah. If I have a choice, I will tell my son and my daughters to go and learn <laughs> Mandarin. Aha, aha. And the reason for that is because the reason for that is because if China is a population of almost 2 billion people, is it over? <laughs> almost 2 billion people. 1.5, yeah, Okay, and we only have 7 billion in the world. So you tell me. <laughs> Pastor, are you telling us the future is Chinese? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to say that already you have 25% or 20% of the world, 20% of the world speaking Chinese. Yeah, Mandarin is already the number one, the most spoken language in the world. You see? So, so you, Spanish, like you told them in you America. See, you see? And English is third. I would um, rather <laughs> shift my camp when it's possible to shift it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, would wow. rather, I, yes, I would rather tell my children to learn Chinese because it's the most popular, popularly spoken language in the world. And besides that, it is also, uh, you know, one out of every five people in the world is going to be speaking Chinese. Wow. And if every, one of, of every five people in the world is speaking Chinese, what am I doing not speaking it? Hmm? You tell me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the only thing that is saving us right now is that the Chinese have not been let out of their borders hmm. en masse, like free immigration. Once that happens... We will be having them like cockroaches and ants everywhere. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you cannot get rid of cockroaches and ants. No, you no, can't. Uh, no, matter, no matter the chemicals you buy. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Once they come in, yeah, you have to speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn that language. So, mm -hmm. so, so you mean South Africa is ahead by making Mandarin one of their official languages? Well, it seems to me that somebody out there might be thinking. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is where we are right now. Thanks to what uh, we've been doing for the past few years that has not worked, we are going to be speaking Chinese. Uh, breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. The future is Mandarin. Their language has 3,000 characters. So get studying. 3,000 characters. Yes. English has 24. They have 3,000. That's why they are far intellectually ahead of us. Ooh. So ladies and gentlemen, the earlier you join the winning band, the better, according to Pastor Sunday. I would still like to hold out hope that we will not give up our sovereignty. But from all indications, it looks like we're headed there. So Pastor, please go ahead and tell us what we can do or how we can at least help ourselves not to... <laughs> Not to be completely taken over, or is it? Are we completely hopeless at this point? Well, very good question. Kagame Dvayon, kudam nes motret. Kagame Dvayon. Segda suda, sovereign suda. So when, 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 uh, what, what should we do concerning China? What should we do concerning China? First of all, like I said, we need China. Secondly, like I said, the inevitability of China is provoked by the failure of the West. So how do we resolve this dilemma? Every war that, has been, that was fought in the Bible was not fought because of religion as in today's world. Most of the wars in today's world is fought because of religion, but in the Bible... There was another reason for 90% of the wars that were fought. Almost basically all the wars that were fought in the Bible. And that war, that was that all the wars that were fought, they had one reason for the wars. And that's what we need to, why we need to go to the Bible to learn principles of nation building. Mm. When you go to the Bible, you will see that all wars were fought for the reason of land. Land. Conquering territory. Territory. Conquering territories. <laughs> well, that's exactly what made Great Britain great today. Hmm. That's what made the West what they are today. And I guess 
Chinese are learning. <laughs> I guess they are learning. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they are expanding their territory because they are limited in their own territory, in their own country, and they know that the wars, the ultimate war of life is the war of territories mm. and land. That's why when God spoke to the children of Israel, by the way, if you have not yet shared this message yet, I think it might be a good idea for you to go share the message at this time. Mm -hmm. Share, 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 because especially if you have burden for Africa, this is going to be one of the most popular messages, I mean, one of the most popular programs sure. and shows we are going to be having. So, if when, the reason why Jesus, when God spoke, Jehovah God, Elohim, when God called Abraham, I don't know if you remember that God didn't promise him money. Hmm. And God didn't promise him clothes. You know what he promised him? A land. He said he was going to take him to a land that he will show to him. Land. Territory. That is also conquest, my dear. Hmm. Conquest. And then, look at every war that Israel has ever fought. It is the war of territory. Territory over territories. So when God even delivered them from Egypt, they were always fighting and displacing one nation after the other. So when you go to Israel of old, if you are a foreigner, the land is not divided to you. Mm. <laughs> it's only for the easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You cannot buy the land. Mm. Because that is what God gave. I will, lead, I will give you a land that is flowing with it land. Land. So God led them to that land and it is not permitted they were divided among the tribes of Israel only so for us to secure Africa one policy that every African nation must adopt is foreigners can lease land foreigners can rent land foreigners can use land but foreigners can never buy land for good forever you know that's you can give them a lease for 100 years. You can give them a rent. You can give them, you know, yeah, occupation for some time, but never own. Mm. That is the way to secure ourselves from China. So that, that is, is number one. We can send them packing whenever we feel like. Ah. And we're in control of our destiny, our lease, resources. And the lease will expire. Will expire. So that, or later. You, let, you tell me what, make, what made America who they are right now and what made the red americans the america or indians. The indi indigenous americans mm -hmm. why are they so weak mm -hmm. why are they so weak and they are voiceless in their they own land. land they gave up their land <laughs> and they gave up their land mm -hmm. why is it that all of latin america speaks spanish today they gave up their land mm -hmm. so once you give up your land you are dispossessed you are no more a nation that's why when God was punishing Israel, the highest level of punishment is to displace them, remove them from the land. That's the highest level of punishment. Mm. And that's why the highest level of fulfillment of prophecy in the Bible is to return them again to the land. It's not possible. Because to return you again to the land, normally land is wars are fought for land. What, what, have you heard the word empire? Yes. Uh -huh. The reason why the empire is used is the stronger nation that goes to conquer other land. But God, for him to, in the world, when people are conquering land, to say, I will take you and bring you back, it's impossible. Mm. That's why it's a miracle. Mm. <laughs> and that was why God told Joshua, wherever you tread your feet, of oh, God, I have given it to you. The land is yours. And let me tell you another one. You all know the story of Moses, when God appeared to him in the burning bush. Mm -hmm. And God said, the land where you stand, upon which you stand, yes, is holy, ground. is holy ground. Remove your sandals. 
Now there is a significance there. Because in Israel, you wear shoes only when you are a landowner or a property owner. Wow. Slaves never wore shoes. Oh. <laughs> Because if you wear shoes to my territory, if when you get to my house, you have to remove your shoes. Mm. That's in Israel, original Israel. When you enter my house, into, that's why the Western, I mean the Eastern people, some of them still practice that up to today. Mm. When they enter to your house, you come to visit me, you enter, you at the, my, at, just at the, before you enter to my room, to my place, you, you have to remove, shoes. you take off your shoes. That's why respecting is that in my territory. No, no, that, yeah, oh, yeah, you are smart, you are smart. <laughs> <laughs> that is saying, I recognize your lordship hmm. and ownership over this territory. I am not the owner here. You are the owner. So it's not about the carpet. Ah, you it's about the land. <laughs> your people are talking about carpet. <laughs> and, it's my not, yeah. it. and it's not And it's not about the fire as well. Hmm. You know, so it's not the fire. What God was trying to tell the, the Moses is just like you will remove hmm. your shoes. When you go visit a landowner in another man's territory and recognize his lordship. So I tell you to don't remove your shoes. Thereby submitting the lordship of this territory and of over your life to me. And saying you recognize the lordship of the Lord of Lords. Mm. That is what was happening. You here are my possession. You are not a lord here. You're under my jurisdiction. You are under my jurisdiction. So, that's what it's called the land, the land upon which you stand. So, God is making a statement. Even God sees land as something special. That's why I said the land upon which you stand. Oh. <laughs> wow. So, for you now to allow other people, other nations, to come and possess your land, it's just like saying you, the landowner, is the one that has the movie shoes. Mm. And that is why when Jesus was about to wash the feet of his disciples, they were stopping him for a reason. And the reason they were stopping him is that a lord and a master does not wash the feet of the slave because the slaves don't wear shoes. Mm. They, rather, the slaves and the servants, they are supposed to wash the feet of the master. Okay. So by so doing, Jesus has shown the highest honor. Mm. Possible. Possible. Because he is the one that owns everything. And he decided to become a slave to them. They understood what he was talking about. That's why he said, when you are a leader, do the same to other people. A leader, remove your own shoes and serve them like a slave. It's not saying about what feet washing service. No, no, no. It was just a figure. <laughs> it's a figurative space. And let me go further there. Hmm. If you read the Bible, if you have read your Bible very well, you might also discover that there was an incident that, is, that looks very confusing in the book of Ruth. When you see Naomi, and Naomi told Ruth the daughter-in-law and after she had gone to work on the field of Boaz and after then after she also had discovered that Ruth, uh, uh, Boaz is the nest of Cain to Ruth and he has the right to now you know adopt her as the wife no I mean no, Noemi did something very strange indeed he told the girl and said Go ahead and follow Boaz and notice him and go to the place where he's lying down, where he's sleeping. And by, by the time you've discovered where he's sleeping, go and lay yourself down at the, feet, at the feet of the man that is sleeping. Now, when you read that, if you don't understand the Israeli uh, Jewish culture and tradition, you will think that the old woman was telling her to go sleep with the man and have an adulterous affair. Far from it. That's not what was happening. Mm. But by, and the way he slept, she slept is that she, he is sleeping like this. So he's lying this way, and she, and this, these are his feet. Let's assume these are his feet. These are where his legs are. He's at the, his head is here, his feet is here. So at the end, end of the feet. Horizontally. Horizontally. She so she is lying like this. At the end of the feet, so that when she he stands, for example, he, like under, yeah. that is the highest 
wisdom that is demonstrated there. That I belong to you by tradition. Mm -hmm. So when the man woke up and saw a woman laying there, he knew that, okay, there is something higher than just a woman coming to lay here accidentally. He knows that, okay, I didn't know. Tell me, why are you? Why am I the heir? She submitted herself. She submitted herself to his lordship. You are my master, Lord. That's why Sarah called Abraham Lord hmm. at the feet of. <laughs> so, land, if you want to resolve the problem of Africa, land is very important. But why? Because feet means possession, dominion. So, when you remove shoes, you are dispossessed. But when you wear, wherever the sole of your feet are tread upon, that is the case. Why did they have to go and lie there? Wherever the soul of your future turn around, you possess it. it signifies possession, dominion, ownership. Okay. So when you, God told him, remove your shoes, this is a, a holy land, it means remove your shoes, you are not having possession here. This land doesn't this belong land to you. This land doesn't belong to me. That's what we need to apply for. Ladies and gentlemen,